James Tierney with tiernieyeducation.com here. Please make sure you like and subscribe for more videos like this and head on over to tiernieyeducation.com to schedule a meeting with me today. Many intro to micro classes will have you fill out a cost table like the one you see here. This is one that I used in my classroom for, for many years. And let's go over everything on the top first so that way we know exactly what this is asking. So the first thing we have over here on the left is the quantity. So this is usually the quantity that they would produce and going across would say, okay, if we produce zero quantity, what are all the different costs? So that's how you read this, right? If we were to produce two quantity, what would the different costs be? So let's go over each of these costs so we understand what they're asking. FC is fixed cost. Now, I'm not going to go over exactly what each one of these means. It'll be a different video. Um, this video is assuming that you kind of have the base idea and you're just trying to figure out how to fill out one of these tables. VC is my variable cost. TC is my total costs. AFC is my average fixed costs. A VC would be my average variable costs and a TC is average total cost, leaving us with MC being marginal cost. So if you need to make flashcards that show you what the abbreviations are for each one of these, that's not a bad idea. Let's make sure we know all of the equations for all of these. I'll put these over here on the right. We'll start with total cost. Total cost is going to be your fixed cost plus your variable cost. Your average fixed cost is just going to be your fixed cost divided by the quantity. Your average variable cost is going to be your variable cost divided by the quantity. Your average total cost is going to be your total cost divided by your quantity. And then your marginal cost, which is the most difficult of these, is going to be how your total cost changes with respect to how your quantity is changing. Another way to think about this is like total cost two minus total cost one. So like your second value and then your quantity two minus quantity one. So it's going to be your changes. A quick aside, this can also be my change in your variable cost over your change in quantity because your fixed cost is not going to change. Now that we have some background out of the way, let's think about solving this problem and filling out this table. Let's start by focusing on quantity equaling to zero. What exactly does that mean? That means no production. So by definition, it means your variable cost is going to equal to zero because variable costs are the costs that are incurred when you are producing your goods and services. So if we know that my total cost is 500, but my variable cost is zero, all of the costs must be fixed costs, right? Because total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. That allows us to fill in our first number of fixed costs equaling 500. Now, with that sticking with quantity equal to zero, don't forget that average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost. Whenever you see that average, you're dividing by the amount of quantity that's being produced. And you can't divide by zero, so most places will just put dashes. That's how I would teach it. I just taught it with dashes. They might want you to put undefined. It depends on your uh, professor's preferences. But also, the marginal cost is my change in quantity. Well, you can't go from like negative one production to zero. So again, there really isn't a change. So we're also going to put a dash for marginal cost. Usually the easiest row is going to be that quantity equal to zero with no production. So they'll either give you, your professor will either give you like total cost, that way you can figure this out, or they might give you a fixed cost and you have to realize variable cost is zero and then you can figure out the total cost. Once you have a single fixed cost, you can fill in all of the fixed costs for that entire column because 
fixed cost is just that. It's fixed no matter what. You could produce zero or a million hamburgers. The rent on the building is still the same. So we can fill 500 in this table all the way down. One, two, three, four, we're gonna fill that in. So the fixed cost is constant all the way down this table. I then suggest to students you move to the average fixed cost because average fixed cost, as you see over here on the right, is your fixed cost divided by quantity. And we know the fixed cost, so we just have to divide it by the quantity. So this, uh, when quantity is equal to one, my average fixed cost would be 500 divided by one. So it's just gonna be this column here, the second column divided by the first column. So 500 divided by one is just going to be 500. 500 divided by two is going to be 250. 500 divided by three is going to be 166.67. And 500 divided by four is going to be 125. So again, the way that we calculate average fixed cost, we have our average fixed cost equal fixed cost divided by quantity. When I talk to my students about a table like this, I say everybody should be able to get to this point very, very quickly before we have to really use our analytical skills to try and fill in the rest of this puzzle. The next step, I would always just start working my way down. So now I'd go with quantity equal to one. So when they produce one, notice on this example that I'm giving, we have fixed cost and variable cost and fixed cost plus variable cost is going to equal average total cost. That was the first equation I gave over here on the right. So what do we have? We have 500 plus 200. That's going to give us 700. And we can work all the way across now with our average total and average variable cost because this is just dividing by one. So my average variable cost is going to be 200 and my average total cost is going to be 700. As a side note, you might have realized, oh, wait a minute, average fixed cost plus average variable cost, that looks like it's going to equal average total cost, which is true. That's another equation we can add down here that you might want to have. Your average fixed cost plus your average variable cost will equal your average total cost because all you're really doing up here to the right is you're just dividing the left-hand side by Q and each value on the right-hand side by Q. Now let's take a moment to think about what this marginal cost means, right? Marginal cost down here is the equation. It's how my total cost is changing when my quantity is changing. Now we're lucky in this example, quantity is just changing by one, so we're dividing by one. So all we have to really look at is the numerator, which is my change in total cost which is going from 500 to 700, which that means it's going to be 200. My marginal cost is going to equal 200 because we are seeing how total cost is changing. And as I said down here about change in variable cost, we went from zero variable cost to 200. So that's my change. It's the difference between these two. It's my change. The advice I give to my students is then just let's keep working our way down. Now let's look at quantity equal to two. And let's always go and look at what was given by the professor. So if I give my students the average total cost of being 400, average total cost 400 when quantity equals two, I must want them to use that. Okay, so if I know my average total cost is 400 when the quantity was two, can we figure out what the total cost is? Well, let's go ahead and do just some slight manipulation of that average total cost equation. I'm gonna bring this over here. I left a little extra space. If I know that ATC is equal to TC over Q, I can multiply both sides of this equation by quantity, right? That would get rid of the quantities on the right-hand side. I can rewrite this as total cost will also equal average total cost times quantity. And that's something that we'll want to think through. The totals are always going to equal the averages times or multiplied by the quantity. If I told you there was a hundred individuals and the average height of those 100 individuals was 60 inches, the total inches of height that these individuals would have would be that 60 times 100 or 6,000. So total is always just my average 
times the number of items that we are looking at. That helps us out a lot here in our thing, because if I know the average total cost is 400 and there's two production, the total production must have been 800 or 400 times two. Now everything just falls into place like our row of one quantity. If I know that the total cost is 800 and the fixed cost is 500, well, what's left over? That would be 300 for variable cost. If we have 300 for variable cost, 500 for fixed cost, we get that 800, right? This is, we add those up, we add, we get to 800. Now the average variable cost, we just have to divide that variable cost of 300 by two and we get 150. And we move back down here to the last column of marginal cost. How much is that changing? That total cost went from 700 to 800. So that means it increased by 100. And we have now filled out our third column when quantity is equal to two. Let's keep moving. We're gonna go now to the fourth column when quantity equals to three. Again, I gave my students $75 as the marginal cost. That must be what they, what I'm trying to get them to use to figure out this puzzle, to solve this puzzle. So whatever number your instructor is giving you, start there. So if, they're, if I'm giving my students 75 as marginal cost, I know from my equations that marginal cost is how much total cost is changing divided by the quantity. So I look over here, I know that going from 800 to whatever my unknown is must be 75 more. So that's 875. And we are right back to where we were with most of these that I now have enough information to fill out everything else. If my total cost is 875, my fixed cost is 500, what must be left over? That is the $375 for the variable cost. We're just gonna divide all this stuff by three. We already did the average fixed cost. We're just gonna divide average variable cost and average total cost. We're gonna divide the variable cost and total cost by three. So we have 375 divided by three, which is 125. And 875 divided by three, you might have to use a calculator here, I already did that for you to save some time. You can pause if you need to, is 291.67. And of course, you could have done that by adding up 125 plus 166.67, and you'll see that's 291.67. All right, everyone, we have one more column to look at. Again, whatever the professor gives you here, I gave 125. So if I know the average variable cost is 125, that must mean going off of our idea that the totals are just equal to the average times the quantity, my total variable cost or my VC must be 125 times four. What is 125 times four? Well, that is, you can use your calculator if you need to, it's 500. And we just start working across. 500 plus 500 is 1,000 for the total cost. If I divide 1,000 by four, I'll get 250 for the average total cost. And then the last thing I need to figure out is marginal cost, which is just how much did this change, right? How much did it change from 875 to 1,000 or from 375 to 500? And we see the marginal cost is 125. So there you have it. This is how you solve for a table like this. Now, if you're really trying to learn microeconomics, there's a ton of other uh, things you'll want to know, like how do each one of these look on a graph? Why do we see marginal costs going down and then going up? Why do we see average variable costs kind of going down? Why do we see average total costs going down? Will it start to come up if we were to add five, six, seven, eight? All of those are great questions and videos that I will make sure I put up in the future. But for now, I hope that this video helps you learn how to fill out one of these tables. If you need extra help, please visit my website, tierneyeducation.com. You can set up a free meeting and we can start meeting to talk about how to make sure your experience in micro or macroeconomics is the best it can be.